Hello everyone, and welcome to the stupid side of the movie making world, where movies beyond imagination are made for no other reason apparently but to launder money, as someone said. So yeah, instead of opening a laundromat or just a chicken place, you you make movies like this! I learned something! Thank you, Commodore, who said that. Today we set off on an adventure to another dimension based on this interesting movie called Piranaconda. You know, it's just, I wanted to leave the title as a big reveal because you're going to see how they get to name the monster later on in the movie. So don't skip the video, watch it, because trust me, it's worth it. But I would not have been able to hide it from you because the theme song throughout this entire movie is the name Piranaconda. And it's so freaking cheesy. Let's dive in. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Just kidding. This movie has the most generic plot known to mankind, but that's what sci-fi movies are. Anyways, the movie starts off with a team arriving at a Hawaiian island to go get something. This dude in the hat, you may know him because he starred in Free Willy and other movies that didn't do as well, but you know, he had like one-off movies. Anyways, they find a bunch of eggs, and this is exactly what he's been looking for, because these eggs belong to a creature he's been hunting for a long time. Get your camera out. It's just like you said. <laughs> okay, buddy, because being the guard and turning your back is a fantastic idea. Anyways, they take their sweet time and start harvesting the eggs, or at least they get one. Poor stupid guard is not being really a guard, and he's not looking behind him, and the monster comes. Boom! Let me tell you, one of the things you will notice in the movie is how many clouds of blood there are. People die, they erupt into blood clouds. The professor looks very annoyed, the helicopter guys know something is wrong, and he's like, I'm gonna get out of here. He sees the snake thing, and then he decides to just hover in the way. And, uh, yeah, so the helicopter is now gone. It's okay, dude, that's exactly the face I had this entire time watching this movie. So that was for the intention of- sorry, I can't do his face. There we go, Falcon will be our mascot. Yeah, so anyways, we switch from that group of people to a new group of people. And don't worry, the adventure gets better. Here we meet a girl who's supposed to be playing the dumb blonde character, but she actually is dumb. And we have kind of this filmception thing going on where it's one bad movie inside of another bad movie. Not you. Not you. <laughs> this film crew is having the time of their lives, not really, trying to make a horrible movie, but they don't even realize that there's a monster prowling that just ate a whole bunch of other people. Everyone with tender chest meat in this movie is going to get eaten. I don't know why everyone feels the need to continuously like go off far into the woods by themselves. They just keep finding reasons for them to go off by themselves, you know, just because. And of course, another victim as the monster finds her. She looks like she's doing it to herself and having fun cleaning her phone screen. She doesn't hear the thing until it's right in front of her. Really though? <laughs> I think they make these people stupid on purpose so that you don't care if they get eaten. This big snake monster gets a chomp of that tasty leg. There's a chance that the girl will still make it. And there's blood cloud number two. You're, uh, you're pretty smart for a guy who likes to jump off buildings. I have my moments. Oh, here we meet these two people. The girl's okay, I don't mind her, but the guy's a freaking douche. I don't know if it's because of the lines they gave him, but it just makes him look like a freaking weed. We know that there's obviously some tension between these two and they like each other. This, my folks, is what is called the calm before a storm in these types of movies. She starts telling him about some kind of ancient mystical monster that has been sighted and more people are knowing about and people are going missing. Things are happening and it's exciting. Meanwhile, he's like, haha, I don't care. <laughs> get in your pants. You really believe this, do you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing over there? Nothing, Kimmy. Just uh, preparing for tomorrow's shoot. Well, then you won't mind if I borrow Jack. There's a spot on my back I can't reach. Okay, so this is the moment in that test of multiple choice questions where you have to choose one right answer. And it should be fairly obvious what that answer is, but you still get it wrong. Introducing this dude. I know it's tempting, but the girl you like is right here. So, since this is the girl you actually do really care about, you can always smash the other one later, you try to impress her. Or do you? 
I, I, Kimmy, we're actually kind of kind of busy right now. Well, that's a man. Nothing that these types of girls like more than you telling them no. It'll only take a minute. You wouldn't want your star to burn now, would you? Bro, are you freaking serious? Well, she did say it'll only take a minute. How undeveloped are you? I will be right back. I promise. <laughs> like, that's the real issue. Whether or not you're actually coming back, you freaking troglodyte. Try to imagine this the other way around, because I've been in a similar situation. I was stupid, but to be fair, I did not actually like the guy who was coming on to me. So this other guy came up, he's like, hey, come here real quick. And I'm like, hey, he didn't have a shirt on. And somehow my hands ended up on his abs. Don't ask me how or why, but I kept them there. The other guy who I was not interested in, who was coming on pretty strong, was very, very hurt by that. I wasn't trying to hurt him, but I also didn't want to hurt him by telling him to go away. I prefer like visual humiliation as opposed to my personal verbal humiliation towards him. You know what I mean? But that other guy was smart because you know what he did? He left and I let him because I wasn't interested. This guy is actually interested in black haired women. So, you know, I guess he's figuring he'll like kill two birds with one stone. Rub chick's ass that's really attractive that he doesn't want to be with and then apologize to chick he wants to be with later and she'll probably accept or not, then he'll get to default to, you know, blonde chick and have any pick of the litter he wants anyway. Thanks, Jack. This is a power play in which attractive female can't stand the fact that any other male would be interested in any other female besides herself. So she steals the mate away from the other female who is lesser on the totem pole. Accomplished. Sorry, black hair girl, you lose. Yeah, but it is kind of hot, though. And I like to watch. No way. <laughs> Meanwhile, our professor friend is standing here looking like he's shooting a country music video, wanting some place to hide before that monster comes back. Unfortunately, this little facility is already taken. He is caught by one of the henchmen. Hench... Women, who cares? So Professor Lovegrove, does anyone really have a name like that? Anyways, he tells him that, look, dude, you're making a big mistake keeping me here. It's a big old animal. It's in the jungle. It's gonna come here and kill us all. And they're like, oh, it's that river demon that you're talking about, you crazy old bat. You know, no one ever believes these guys until people's heads start flying off their shoulders. Basically, these guys want to take anybody who's on this island to hold them for ransom so they can have some money. Because, I guess, reasons, you know? You want money, they'll pay to get me out of here. I still think we need to get out of this jungle as soon as possible. I'll tell you when we leave. If you still have a mouth. Hey, another scene with girls with nice tits to get eaten. By the way, take a swig of your water or cranberry juice every time they say Leilani. I don't know. Is everything okay, Leilani? Yes. Yes, Leilani? 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 So they know that something is wrong with Leilani. The first thing that they do is to try and look for her as fast as possible. No, it's not. I'm not leaving without these flowers. Now mind you, these girls have never seen the snake. They don't know what the hell's going on. They hear Lilani scream and they're like, you know what? <laughs> Sucks to be you. We're out. The eye tracking movement for the actors in this movie is just horrendous. I mean, this girl on the right knows what to look at, but the girl who doesn't want to leave without her flowers is just freaking dumb. Let me look at everything around me instead of the thing that's directly looking at me. and gentlemen, blood cloud number three. At least I think we're on three, right? Hard to keep up with all these cotton candy mists of blood. While all this is happening, our other characters are dealing with first world problems. You're rubbing lotion on another woman's half naked body? Yeah, she's just bored. She wanted somebody to pay attention to her. So a way to encourage the behavior. Just be honest, dude. Just be like, listen, cut me some slack. You're not my girlfriend and I wanted to rub that body. Now, if you want your body to be the thing that my hands rub on, stop playing games and let me take you out. <laughs> Nothing happened. I swear. Well, give me another chance. I'll make it up to you. Huh? Ew. What is up with his face? He looks like an antique ball peen hammer. Like, people's faces are actually shaped like upside down triangles. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's his attitude. Maybe it's the character that they made up for this guy. He is freaking annoying, like a freaking tryhard, but in a distasteful way. I don't know what it is about this guy that rubs me the wrong way. When he's kicking ass, He's fine, but when he's trying to be like cool and trying to impress this girl, it's like, 
dude, where are you? Look, where? Uh, never mind. Dude, you should not be hitting on girls. Like you, you are literally a human neck. Your face, your head, is its own neck. I honestly don't know why I'm getting so mad. It's just one of those, those, those things. Huh? That's a yes. That is a yes. Maybe. It's a maybe. That's a maybe then. Oh my god, cringe. Anyways, they're late to the shoot because they're waiting on Blondie Girl there, and they're rehearsing their lines, still oblivious to the fact that there is a big snake monster flying around the place. Not flying, you know what I mean. But it is running around the place. Not running because it doesn't have legs. Sliding? <laughs> no, no, cut, cut, cut. I hate it. I know how you feel, dude. Are you watching your own movie inside this movie? The story continues, and we must have somebody else running off by themselves for some unknown reason. Stupid girl who doesn't know how to scream tries to rehearse her lines by not screaming at all. We already knew what they were setting this up to be because it's just so freaking painfully obvious, but it's so cheesy and dumb. Even when it's supposedly real, she still fails at it. God almighty, I've never wished for someone to be eaten more than this person. Oh my god, yes, please eat her! Oh my god, I'm sorry. But there is like nowhere else for you to run? What about directly behind you? Oh my god, why are they doing this? Even the snakes are like, okay, we need to put this stupid thing out of her misery, clearly. <laughs> and there you go, ladies and gentlemen, our fourth blood cloud. I swear to you, things just explode into blood clouds in this movie. It's, I don't know if it's an artistic choice or this is supposed to be cheaper than actual blood splatter. I don't know what's going on. Maybe the people here are so airheaded, they're actually made of air. Remember the guys who want to capture people, like random people for ransom? Well, they come and find the rest of the crew and they're like, freeze, we got you now. Then we got Hispanic Brad Pitt over here. They get captured, but don't worry, there's another oblivious couple out there in the midst of the forest going out for some romantic adventure. The boyfriend's actually a fanboy of the girl that can't lotion her own back. Meanwhile, human doucheneck and this other guy managed to get away and they work together to take down the bad guys. The bad guy pursues them but forgets the important rule of the forest. Don't make noise. Blood cloud number five. Blood cloud number six. Oh, that was fun. Anyways, the bad guys now know that there is something to what the professor was saying, and there is a monster that is chasing them. They found out what this monster looks like on one of the video cameras that one of the other team members had dropped. Professor was right all along. We're not dealing with snakes. Claro que sí. Something much worse. It's like an unholy union between a piranha and an anaconda. You mean a piranaconda? I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> so the crew meets Mr. Lovegrove or Lovegrave or whatever his name is, and he wonders if he should tell him about the monster. Honey, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Why do people say that? Why do they need to say that? Even though, you know, they just finished seeing something that they wouldn't have believed existed otherwise. You know, they just saw a piranha or the head of a piranha on a freaking snake the size of a dinosaur. So, I don't know, maybe give them the benefit of the doubt? But I get it. Let's just give him the benefit of the doubt because not every person there has seen it. I gotta tell you, the bald guy is like one of the only characters I like in this movie. He's very sweet and he got shot in the foot. So we already know that he's gonna die at some point later, but we're hoping he won't. Anyway, the one dimensional villains try to make a ransom video while the good guys try to cook up a way to escape. Black hair girl decides to be the bait because it's one of these movies. Skeptical when you go off in the woods with a girl who says she has to pee and then doesn't have to pee. Go with my cojones. You want I should go after her? I'm sorry, what now? You want I should go after what in tarnation? What is ancient English times? Nobody speaks like that anymore. So the girl at first seems to get away, but you know, it's coming. Somebody always got to fall down in these movies. But don't worry, it's for a good reason. It's because she actually tripped over the nest of the snake piranha thing. I'm sorry, I refuse to say that god awful name. I like River Demon better. 
Time to die. Oh my god. The guy catches up to her. For some reason, unknown to man, why do people always feel the need to make this everlasting speech? You're chasing a person pell-mell, and then when you catch up to them, you stop and give a speech. Really? Dude, hanging the machete over your head like you're a freaking spellcaster. I hope you're happy. Take home your prize today. You get to be a cloud of blood too. What is that, number six now or number seven? I can't keep counting anymore, I I've, I've lost it. Anyways, our girl is terrified but gets up in the slowest way possible and figures out she's better off in the hands of those terrorist guys and that thing that just made that guy evaporate into a cloud of red mist. Now that she's seen it, Love Grow feels quite pleased with himself that everyone is starting to believe him. But oh boy, has black hair girl have some news for everyone else because a snake demon thing has eggs. That's not all it does. I fell into its nest of eggs. Wait a minute. What the frick was that? Okay, easy on the lube there. Way to divert everybody else's attention. Good for you, old broad. This movie's freaking weird. Why does Hispanic Brad Pitt always look like he's shooting some kind of Calvin Klein commercial and he's supposed to be like walking in slow motion or something? <laughs> Poor guy. He never deserved that! Get out of here! Let's. Well, Hammerhead comes to save the day and gives these guys a fighting chance. <laughs> Now, as you can imagine, we're close to the end of the movie. This is around the section where the action is designated, like the ridiculous stuff starts happening. So you're supposed to see more of the monster interacting with the humans. And now here's something the whole family can enjoy. I know, you think so, right? But here's a problem with these low-budget movies. Because they're so low-budget, they cut a lot of corners. But man, oh man, I've seen other low-budget movies that at least try. You know what I'm saying? But... It, you, well, I just always feel so confused watching these movies. This one takes the cake. As you can imagine, our villains are not gonna be very happy that the good guys have gotten away. So they're gonna bring out their guns and start shooting at them. Meanwhile, the ball guy, he's trying to give them a fighting chance. Do you guys notice how many guns the bad guys have, like between them, and what they're shooting? Where they're shooting? Almost got it. Almost isn't good enough. We gotta go. Oh, really? Why? You're not getting hit. You have this invisible plot armor force field around you and the entire vehicle. There is no cracked glass. Nobody's getting grazed. Bullets aren't flying by. Why isn't the van being hit? You hear metal bouncing off of metal. There are like four guns trained on these people. No one's hitting anyone. What the hell? I mean, God, you can't even pretend. There are other low-budget movies that at least make a CGI hole in the van. There are face filters for apps and for your phone, your Android, iPhone, have your pick of the litter that have those stupid deep fake things where you could put bullet holes in your head. Maybe that's not one of them because they can go against their own community guidelines. But there are filters out there that you can put on top of things to make them look like they're really on top of the thing that you're trying to film on. Like, what the hell is going on? That part just irked me to no end. Oh, but, oh, but it, it gets worse. <sighs> Take a breath. It's okay. It's not your fault the movie's bad. <sighs> and it, it's not even that they were trying to make it bad. The, these people were trying to make a good movie. That's what's so sad about it. Okay, I'm gonna calm down for a little bit. Just, just, let's continue. So the bad guys are attracting all this noise with their bullets, and then they realize that there's actually something behind them. The very monster that everyone's been talking about. The, you know. Oh my god. So I want you to look at what everyone else is looking at, because they see the monster, right? Monster's right there upon them. Everyone's goose is about to be cooked really, really well. We got a bigger problem. Whoops! Where is the monster? What are they shooting at? Were they not looking straight up into the air? From the angle at which their eyes or their gaze was directed, the monster should have been several feet in front of them. Do you see the monster anywhere in this freaking frame? You know, I would say this is bad for my blood pressure, but I have naturally very low blood pressure anyway, so this is probably more healthy for me raising my blood pressure. But my god, is it painful. 
Blood cloud number seven, eight, two hundred, I don't know. That's the one that named him Piranaconda. Notice how she has significantly less blood than everybody else. That's because she's the one that's made of the most air, so she's the dumbass that named that thing. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he have Tourette's and that's what caused the explosion? Was the detonator on his shoulder cap? Why isn't everyone flinched before the explosion? Who edited this movie? Let's play that back just to be sure that I'm not crazy. So did you see him flinch and everybody flinch before the explosion went off? Something suddenly gets shoved up their asses and that caused the explosion subsequently. It is not hard to make two things edit on the freaking beat. Edit the movie properly! Now the facility's blown up, the only place that they can hide for miles, and the anaconda is pissed. It starts chasing down the good guys. My ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to hear is one of the best scores of music you'll ever hear to a monster chasing you down with extreme suspense feeling like your ass is puckering because of how fearful you are for your lives. Scooby-Doo movie? And I swear to you, throughout the entire movie, this is the theme song that they're playing. Yep, the Piranha Conda won't let me be. Sounds like they hired some street walker from off the streets at 3 a.m. in the morning is like, you know what, I'll pay you $5 to do karaoke. But it's not really karaoke, just make up your own words. She's filled to the eyelids in gin, and that is what comes out of her mouth. You know, they say audio is everything. Trust me, I am not a professional audio person or whatever you would call that, sound engineer or whatnot. But I'm also not trying to make movies and sell them to people. Bad audio or bad sound or bad music or whatever, bad choices for that overall are way, way less preferred than an actual bad video or bad CGI with good audio. Point being, if you're gonna have bad CGI or bad cinematography or what have you, make sure your audio is good. Trust me, it can really help. At least deaf people who are listening to this don't have to be like, what in the ass is this mess? You're making them see how horrible the movie is. Even though they can't see, you're literally giving that part of it away. Tell me what the hell I just saw. Your career going down the drain very fast. Your severely badly shaped head stopping it from going all the way down. The reptilian predator. It's real. It's really real. I tried to tell you that. It grew at a hyper accelerated growth rate. It's capable of anything. It's a genetic free. Hey, pal, this is what I just heard. Blah, 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 blah. This is what I'm seeing. Nothing, nothing, nothing is chasing you. Not for you, just go. From what? Go where? There is nothing chasing you! Oh, I'm sorry. Did they forget to put in the animation of the snake chasing the van? Why? Are you that low budget that you're like, you know, we're gonna chop off 75% of the chase scene and leave the rest for, like, later? Because, um, reasons! Notice how they are all still panicking and absolutely nothing is chasing them. Nothing is chasing them. Nothing is chasing you! Are you seeing something that we don't see? Is the snake suddenly invisible? This car that had no bullets in it that's supposed to have been laced with bullets is flying down the road and they are all losing their shit because nothing is chasing them! Show up for his scene. Oh my god, I cannot with this music. So we see the snake take off like a freaking bullet, which is not normal, and then the song at the same time is singing faster than the speed of light. Isn't that what she said? 
Okay. I mean, whatever. But you can't have the group getting away too far. Something has to block the way. Can you guess what that's gonna be? Oh boy, it looks like it's nothing. This guy is literally flooring the brakes and there is nothing in front of him. Nothing! Do you see anything in front of the road? I do not. Oh, no way. So just to be clear, there's nothing there, right? <laughs> Jesus, Joseph and Mary. So, um, you know what? <laughs> Whatevs, listen, the snake is now in front of them. What I'm confused about is the snake is faster than in the speed of light. So it cuts around them to curl itself up in front of the road. For what reason? It was trying to kill them. It was trying to catch up to them. So we cuts in front of them. But instead of ramming into the van, because it's faster than the van, obviously, it just sits there. Okay, doesn't even, whatever, maybe it's a different snake. So this guy comes out and he's like, you know what? He has the bright idea. He's gonna kill this thing. He doesn't give a damn. Cause remember the snake ate his woman, the one who gave the thing the name. Maybe that's why it ate her the way it did. Clearly this dude wants revenge. Anyway, so he shoots piece of the thing's face off and the people in the van are able to get away. <laughs> Gorge. Oh, shot was the one inside that car with them girls. Maybe this is the one that had been chasing them. I guess that's the female, but then why? Where was she all this time? I'm so confused. The bad guy later decides that he wants to still go after the good guys because it's somehow their fault that his blondie, horrific animal name caller died. Meanwhile, we see Ditsy Blonde, who is sitting on the beach. And I actually do like her. She's a very adorable character. She's very simple, you can tell. But she was supposed to have this romantic spot with her boyfriend. The one who had earlier in the show been salivating over Dom Actress Blonde. Remember our cool bald-headed guy that looks like he's supposed to own a pizzeria or a deli? He comes through because, you know, he got away. He was supposed to help the others by providing them cover. He's alive. He found her. He tries to warn her that this is big monster out there and she doesn't want to hear it. She's just waiting for a boyfriend who now she believes is in dire straits. No, we both need help. Listen to me. No. Rick? 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 This is why I don't get married. That's the reason you don't get married. The reason is because females go crazy and actually try to look for you if you're lost in the forest because of how much they love you. Good reason, dude. Forever alone. YOLO, right? What am I saying? It's not his fault. The writing is deplorable. Fresh water. Thank you. Oh my. So the rest of the Scooby-Doo gang finally get some time to settle down and rest, drink water from leaves and whatnot, and they are so happy. Now it's time that they relax and try to figure out what they're gonna do to get off the freaking island. You got a uh, yoke all over your shirt. It's sticky. I, I can't yeah. get it off. Guys, does this not remind you of po Does this not remind you of adult movies? Like, you could deal with the funniness of it because, you know, you're getting something else and that makes it even more funny and more enjoyable and entertaining. But this is just like the horrible acting without the bonus, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh god, if I cringe anymore, I'm gonna break my spine. Let's take this, okay? smiling yeah why are you smiling trapezoid i got you out of your top and it's not even our second date what are you nine what is with this dude nature's instinct at its finest i mean what do you even say to something like that oh really you think you're gonna get a second date i like my chance yeah, you get us out here alive and we'll talk right on it honey just before we hit the water. What? Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> Don't you ever do that to me again. But he got you out alive. This is what you wanted. Notice they're like the only two left alive. All right. Maybe we get the bonus. Here we go, guys. At least not until our second date. <sighs> So guys, that was the movie Piranaconda, but before we go, this has been one hell of a journey into this adventure, let's take a look 
at some of the other nonsensical bloopy parts of this journey. Now you remember how this snake is faster than the speed of light, right? Well, they are running, or at least fleeing from it on this ATV. This was part of their plan before bombing the snake's head to pieces. I wanted to feature this bonus because it was one of the most action-packed chase scenes. Actually, it was the most action-packed chase scene in the entire movie. Let's take a look. This chase scene was freaking epic. If you have the ability to see shit that's not there, where's the snake? Only God he knows. that it didn't want to eat stupid for dinner. Piranaconda. A movie that is guaranteed to raise your blood pressure so high it will keep you awake for three days straight. No caffeine needed, my friends. Let's add this one to the list. Thanks for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.